In part two of our span tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a span component part that will stretch nicely in between the supports. This is what our assembly looks like before we add the span part. We've got a single support post and two profile member parts, one for the top rail and one for the bottom rail. Now we want to add a component that will span between the supports. So first, we need to create a new span part. Switch to a component type make sure you give it a name, and then click Pick for Model. And we'll select the span part that we want to use. Now it's very important to check the axis location of the span component, because you have to realize where it's going to be placed. The axis of the span component will be placed at the same location as the first supports axis. And I'll show you how that works. When we apply the settings and go to X-ray mode, you can see that the supports axis location is in the exact same location as the spans axis location. And the blue axis of the span will point the same direction as the blue axis of the support component. And the red axis of the span component will point in the same direction as the assembly. By default, the scale to fit checkbox is enabled. This allows the span component to stretch from one support to the other. If we disable this checkbox, you'll see that the span component will use its default scaling and not be stretched. In order to raise this span component to the correct height, we need to apply an up offset. In our case, that offset is equal to exactly 5 inches. To prevent the span component from overlapping into the support, we can apply a start and end setback. For this assembly, that value is 1 inch. Now the assembly is looking good, but what happens when we build it along a slope? Now that's probably not the effect that you would want. So to fix that, there's a number of things you can do. So there's two main settings that affect the behavior of the span components along a slope. One is the shear to fit checkbox, and the other is in the component settings for stay vertical. If we turn off stay vertical and then apply, now you can see that that might be more closer to the effect that you want to achieve. The blue axis of the span component remains the same direction as the blue axis of the support. Now if we go back to the span tab and enable the shear to fit checkbox, now you can see that the red axis of the span is now pointing horizontal, while the blue axis remains in the same direction as the support. The shearing transformation has been applied to the span part to stretch between the supports. If we go back to the component settings, and re-enable Stay Vertical, we get a different result. In this case, the red axis is no longer horizontal, but again, the blue axis remains the same direction as the support, and the shearing has been applied in order to match the slope between the supports. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching.